Um, Bill Clinton is deeply involved. Donald Trump is intimately involved. Bill Richardson, uh, former um, Ehud Barak. Prince Andrew famous for saying he had no idea who this girl was. And then, of course, a picture emerges of the two of them, again, when she was underage. You're listening to The Corbett Report. Welcome, friends. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com, coming to you in a conversation recorded on the 24th of February, 2016. Today, we're talking to Pierce Redmond of Porkins Policy Review. Of course, you will all be familiar with his work by now from our previous conversations, but if you're not, I will include a link to his website and podcast so you can go and check it out for yourselves. And of course, you will also know that he is going to be a podcast producer for the newsbud.com venture when, if, and as that gets funded via the Kickstarter campaign that is ongoing as we speak. And of course, the link to that campaign will be in the show notes as well, so you can go check it out and contribute to help keep this independent media coming and uh, and growing. So, Pierce, today we're going to talk about a subject that I know you've been covering on your podcast, and I hope people will check out some of your previous work on it. We'll throw the links in the show notes so people can do so. But we're going to talk about Jeffrey Epstein? Who is this? What is the Lolita Express? What is this all about? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, well, th first off, thanks for having me on, uh, James. It's always a pleasure being on Corbett Report. Um, so, yeah, quickly, the, the sort of news by Jeffrey Epstein is a quote-unquote billionaire. Uh, hedge fund manager is, I guess, the, his, his general uh, job description. He is a money manager of sorts. Uh, his only known client would be Les Wexner, who's a billionaire uh, himself. He's the owner of Victoria's Secret Limited to... Uh, he used to own Abercrombie and Fitch, but uh, and Epstein is this sort of jet-setting billionaire who's uh, friends to everyone at Harvard and politicians, scientists, uh, actors, and and whatnot. Uh, but he, I guess, came to true prominence outside of the sort of uh, upper echelon of the New York elite when uh, in 2005-2006 a very large-scale investigation went on. To his activities in Palm Beach, uh, he has a owns a, a very large estate in Palm Beach, as well as uh, New York City, New Mexico, and an island uh, in St. Thomas. But in 2005, 2006, a very large uh, child molestation sex scandal uh, was being investigated, involving Jeffrey Epstein. Eventually, the FBI would get involved, uh, and it would come to light that Epstein was uh, molesting uh, sometimes a girl a day uh, for many, many years. But this is only looking at a, I believe it was about an 11-month undercover investigation of Epstein. This is after several girls had come forward. Uh, people will probably be somewhat familiar with Virginia Roberts. Um, she's the only um, a woman involved in this case who's actually uh, presented herself publicly. Uh, but she confirmed uh, not, not only everything that was being said uh, during this investigation in which Epstein was basically picking up, uh, he was using a variety of different women, including uh, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, who your, your listeners might be familiar with. Her father, uh, Robert Maxwell, was a, uh, not only a Mossad spy, but a huge uh, media magnate in the UK. Uh, but he was using a bunch of these different women. He was uh, basically luring uh, girls as young as uh, 14 years old to his giant mansion in Palm Beach. He was molesting them and then um, paying them for what he called massages. This is, uh, generally speaking, this is just pay off money. You know, here's a couple hundred bucks. Keep your mouth shut. Uh, and uh, this uh, sort of, you know, <laughs> uh, mushroomed out. As I said, the FBI got involved. Uh, Epstein ended up um, copping out to solicitation of an underage prostitute, uh, which is a, a ridiculous um, thing to even... You can't if you know if a if a girl can't consent to having sex, I don't know how she consents to uh, letting you have sex with her for money. But this is uh, what Epstein did in what is the biggest sweetheart deal of all time. This was a uh, secret deal between the uh, prosecution and Epstein's lawyers, who include people like Alan Dershowitz, Ken Starr, um, Jay Lefkowitz, a uh, bunch of a uh, lot of lot of uh, very prominent lawyers in this huge sweetheart deal where Epstein only had to serve, I believe, I'd have to check my notes for the exact amount of time, I believe it was 12 months, and that was knocked down to maybe 8 or 10 months, uh, of which he was housed in a private wing of a prison, which he donated a lot of money to, uh, incidentally, in Palm Springs, and he was allowed um, work release 
for seven, uh, six, I'm sorry, six out of the seven days of the week where he was allowed to leave for up to eight, ten hours at a time. He only had to return to his jail cell uh, at night. Uh, and then this, um, he served his time. Uh, there was a big party for him here in New York City that was attended by Prince Andrew, Katie Couric, George Stephanopoulos, just to name a few. Uh, and then the case essentially quieted down. And more recently, as I said, this um, uh, woman now, Virginia Roberts, came forward and said that uh, not only was she molested by Epstein, but she was pimped out to people such as Prince Andrew, Alan Dershowitz. Um, the list goes on. Uh, countless uh, people were uh, using and abusing her. She eventually escaped uh, from Epstein and um, lived in hiding for several years and then came forward. And this case has sort of taken on a whole new dimension. Um, Bill Clinton is deeply involved. Donald Trump is intimately involved. Bill Richardson, uh, former um, Ehud Barak, Chris Tucker, Kevin Spacey, Courtney Love, uh, basically a who's who. Everybody and anybody knew Jeffrey Epstein and was hanging out with this guy. Uh, and this uh, case has now sort of reached a new phase. Uh, just to sort of wrap it up, there are now two ongoing, or three technically, uh, ongoing cases that are separate from the original case but are all directly involved. The first and the, the major one deals with Jane Doe number one and two, who are seeking to overturn this deal. They were never notified, which is illegal, that there was a plea deal involved. In any sort of sex um, abuse case, rape case, anything like that, when a plea deal is made, the victims are supposed to know. And again, Epstein completely admitted to um, molesting, well, I guess what he would say is that he just paid for sex. Uh, and he was quoted at one point in the New York Post as saying that, oh, it's not really a crime. Uh, this is no different for, than me stealing a bagel. This is how you describe paying uh, 14, 15-year-old girls for sexual favors. But anyway, there is an ongoing case in Palm Springs to overturn this. There is a ton of evidence that the federal prosecutors were working uh, directly with uh, Epstein's uh, team, that they knowingly uh, did not contact uh, Jane Doe number one, two, three, any of these Jane Doe's, and that they did this all secretly. None of this was above board. This is not how uh, normal uh, legal proceedings are supposed to, to go on. And there is another major case, uh, a deposition case, that Virginia Roberts has filed against Alan Dershowitz, who claimed that everything she said was... Uh, it, to quote his own words, made up out of whole cloth. He claimed he never met her, that she was a liar, that she was out for money. Then, of course, Dershowitz claims uh, that he he did know who Virginia Roberts was, but he never he was never on the plane with her. Um, and there's also another um, de uh, uh, defamation case that um, Virginia Roberts has launched, also against uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, who claimed that she made it all up, and now. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell has since stated to a um, bunch of different news outlets like the Daily Mail that uh, she never called her a liar, meaning that she is telling the truth. Um, <laughs> so those are the, the three major cases that are going on. And as I said, there's a lot of different tentacles involved in this and a lot of interesting people. All right. Well, I, I hope that people have at least heard of this case, if not from my own coverage back in our uh, uh, political pedophile uh, podcast episode, but from your coverage or elsewhere. But for myself personally, I, I think I'd heard uh, something about this story in the past, but it wasn't until the Prince Andrew uh, accusations came out that it really, I think, got uh, some attention in the press. And since then, as you say, there's been a lot of names that have been associated with Epstein, um, including Dershowitz, including Clinton and Trump and uh, and uh, Ehud Barak, was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ehud Barak, uh, lots yeah. of very, very high profile politicians and, and actors and celebrities of various sorts. Which ones have been actually accused of the, the sexual assault by Virginia Roberts and or others? And which ones are just people in his kind of contact list? Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a good point to make. It is A lot of people are lumping all of these in. So far, uh, the only person that Virginia Roberts has uh, formally named that she herself was forced to have sex with multiple times is uh, Prince Philip and Alan Dershowitz. Prince Andrew. Now, uh, Prince Andrew, excuse me. Prince Andrew, yes, right, not Prince Philip. Prince Andrew and Alan Dershowitz. Um, and this is was over the course of, um, you know, multiple different times. Again, Prince Andrew famous for saying he had no idea who this girl was. And then, of course, a picture emerges of the two of them, again, when she's underage. 
those are the only two people that have uh, that Virginia Roberts has named as people that she actually had sex with. We don't know how many other Jane Doe's are out there. Again, a lot of these legal proceedings are very hush hush. We don't know who Jane Doe number one or two are. We don't know if that uh, they were ever made to have sex with people other than Epstein. Those are the two people that we one hundred percent are you know definitely know that Virginia Roberts is willing to stake her. Reputation, and let me say to um, the people representing Jane Doe number one and two are um, Paul Casal and Brad Edwards. These are not ambulance chasers. These are very well respected um, uh, lawyers. These are these are real people. These they're not picking up cases for the hell of it for money. Um, they are they are they truly believe what these women have to say. Uh, I can't remember Virginia Roberts' uh, lawyer off the top of my head, but again, a prominent lawyer, someone who's not, uh, you know, looking for fame or publicity. So those are the two people that we absolutely know. I will say, uh, what well, many people uh, will say that Clinton had to have been involved. I certainly think there's a lot of suspicious things going on. Virginia Roberts claimed that she never saw Clinton engage in any sexual act while they were on um, uh, what is now called Orgy Island, which is. Um, uh, Epstein's Island in St. Thomas. He was absolutely there, uh, something he denies. And when Virginia Roberts asked Epstein a point blank, why is he here? Uh, Epstein alluded to the, well, he said that one, that he owes me a favor and alluded to the fact that he had blackmail on Clinton. Uh, and that's why Clinton was there. And Virginia Roberts said that that was one of the, her main uh, things when she, anytime Epstein would force her to have sex with someone, she, he would debrief her afterwards. And, she, and this is essentially what uh, Epstein was running, not only a child prostitution ring, but also a blackmail ring as well. So those are the only two people. Again, though, uh, Donald Trump intimately involved in this. He's, a, he's at least been to Epstein's house. He's flown on Epstein's plane. Virginia Roberts worked at Mar-a-Lago, which is a resort owned by Donald Trump. Uh, and this is, again, a guy who said he never heard of Jeffrey Epstein when he's quoted years ago as saying that he's a great guy and that he likes women on the young side as much as he does. They were spotted together all over. But so far, all we really know are uh, Dershowitz and Prince Andrew. All right. So we have Jane Doe 1 and 2 who are suing because of the illegal plea deal that Epstein copped. And we have Virginia Roberts with a couple of different defamation lawsuits. Where are we at with this? What's what's happening right now? Um, so the uh, the main the main case to overturn this insane plea deal uh, has actually uh, gained quite a bit of ground. There is ample evidence that, in fact, the federal prosecutors did um, go out of their way at the behest of Epstein's lawyers to completely, um, uh, you know, n- not tell that the, these women what was going on. Um, there was even a. Um, the judge involved in that original case, uh, who goes by the name of Acosta, wrote a very lengthy letter where he went into detail. He said that he was being, you know, he was being followed, that he was being intimidated, that from the very beginning this was a case that was um, intimately being controlled by Epstein. That case has actually. Um, gone forward quite a bit. There have been um, more calls to depose federal officials. That seems entirely likely to actually happen right now. Um, they've also, uh, you know, just sort of slowly been kind of building up a stronger and stronger case that this was not only widespread, uh, but that this was being covered up at multiple levels. For instance, Epstein had uh, tens of photos of naked girls all over his house in Palm Beach. Now, anyone that entered into that house and saw that and failed to actually go forward with that would be guilty of at least viewing child pornography. So there are a lot of different uh, steps in this case. But the main one is that, um, you know, looking at the the sort of uh, reports that are coming out of Palm Beach, it, they are making progress. People are starting to believe that there was ample collusion between the two groups going on in terms of getting Epstein this amazing deal. And I'll quickly point out who was governor uh, during uh, much of this is Jeb Bush. Um, so, uh, you know, everyone is uh, connected. In terms of the defamation suit, Alan Dershowitz, I think, is going to actually end up really losing. He's um, he's actually had a bunch of setbacks. Uh, he's had, um, uh, he, he tried to turn this into some sort of extortion deal. 
um, that Virginia Roberts had cooked up to bilk uh, Les Wexner out of billions of dollars. That was thrown out. He's been caught repeatedly lying uh, from everything from I never had a massage to I didn't know Virginia Roberts to I did have a massage, but it was from a Russian woman. Uh, I did know who Virginia Roberts was, but she was never around when I was there. Uh, so that that defamation suit is also um, – I mean basically Dershowitz just keeps putting his foot in his mouth. Um, so that case is actually going uh, fairly well again in favor of Virginia Roberts. Uh, there have been a, a couple other little details, but I would say that these these are cases that are not going to be sort of won overnight. These are going to be very long uh, things that are sort of building up, but they're going in a direction that does not look good. And I think um, I actually I I think personally, uh, and Dershowitz has sort of said a few things that allude to this. He's willing to kind of put Epstein out. He's already come forward and said that this was a terrible thing. Had he known uh, that this was going on the years prior when he was buddy buddy with Jeffrey Epstein, he would have never defended him. Uh, and he's actually his lawyer is uh, Louis Free, former FBI director, uh, and he's you know kind of going the distance in terms of proving that he. Uh, that he never had sex with anybody, and neither did Bill Clinton. Um, so, but, but as I said, uh, Dershowitz seems scared about this. I think he's he's said too many things publicly uh, that the defamation suit could totally go against him. And he's also stated at the beginning of the, you know, he countersued, but at the beginning of this, he said, "This is I'm either going to win this or this will destroy my career." So he knows full well the weight of this sort of a thing, and I think he is kind of running scared a bit. Very interesting. Well, if Louis Freed's vouching for him, then I guess he must be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What could go wrong? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, extremely fascinating case. And I think the other part of this is that if the, uh, if Dershowitz actually does lose the defamation case, it is still a question of whether or not he will pay a penalty for it in the court of public opinion, depending on whether or not that gets much attention. Because, of course, it is the uh, the big spotlight of attention, what gets attention and what doesn't, that often determines whether these things really are career and reputation ending, or whether he'll continue to make nightly appearances on the uh, nightly news as, as some sort of expert commentator. And, of course, the excluded factor in all of this is that, well, of course, the corporate media is highly complicit with a lot of these people who are implicated in this case, and they don't have any interest, really, in, in exposing something like this that could uh, end up backfiring on them or their advertisers or their their main backers which is exactly why we are hoping to launch newsbud <laughs> the independent media that is brought to you by you uh, of course newsbud.com is the place to go to find out more information about this we've had a couple of roundtable conversations and a telethon and other things that i'll include in the show notes if you haven't seen it yet uh, there is a Kickstarter ongoing right now to try to raise the funding to get NewsBud up and off the ground. Uh, Pierce, tell us about your involvement with NewsBud and what you hope to be doing with it. Yeah, so I, I am uh, I am with NewsBud 100%. I would be a senior producer within NewsBud, and I would definitely be covering uh, the Epstein uh, case in a lot more detail than I already have done. As you were saying, James, much of the corporate media kind of covers up uh, what's going on with uh, Epstein? You'll see Trump talking about Bill Clinton's sex capades, but he curiously doesn't mention uh, Epstein at all within that breath. Uh, so yeah, I mean, but he uh, has mentioned Epstein, by the way. Yes, he. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. They're good buddies. Um, well, yeah, he liked oh, them a yeah, bit yeah, young, exactly. but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I flew on his plane, but that's that's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, this is definitely. A, I think this is a huge story. Um, that has gone completely unnoticed um, virtually everywhere. I mean, no, no one is, no one really wants to pick up on any part of it. There are a few people, I will say, um, you know, there are always still some good people in the mainstream media. Much of the good reporting has actually come from the mainstream media. So there are some people like uh, Vicki Ward at Vanity Fair, um, uh, what's it, Rita Sarnoff at the Daily Beast of all places has actually done quite a bit of good work. And there's recently a pretty good article by Ken Silverstein uh, writing over advice. But uh, those are all great, but a lot of the pieces are not really put together and the full sort of context of what's going on. Now, yeah, they'll, and many times um, they will only pick up on one side. So Radar Online has, uh, it's very sort of tabloidy, gossipy, has actually done quite a, a lot of stuff on Epstein, but they will only focus on Bill Clinton. Uh, nobody wants to focus on Donald Trump. No, nobody wants to focus on Bill Richardson. Uh, who is extremely close to him 
uh, who was governor of New Mexico. And again, this is one of the other properties that Epstein has. No one will even talk about what was going on in New Mexico. He has this vast, enormous ranch. Uh, there's also a lot of um, financial uh, things. There's actually a big case right now going on with his former um, mentor, uh, Steve Hoffenberg, who was, I think he's still in jail for about 30 years for a Ponzi scheme. There is a huge financial aspect to a lot of this, which raises questions about where Epstein is getting money. Uh, is this money actually coming from real people? Is he stealing money from people? Is this blackmail money that he's then funneling in? So there are, there's a lot more complexity to this story that even I haven't gotten into. Again, because uh, as you can see, I'm just sitting in my in my room, just as James is, and there's only so much time in the day. There's only so many resources, uh, and it's very hard to, um, especially with a story like this, you're getting into very tr tricky subject matter, uh, and there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, and again, I'm only limited to what I can see on the internet. Now, now again, uh, what's going on in Palm Beach? Even what's being reported there, not everything. You know, the, the Palm Beach Daily News does some reporting, but not all of it. They're not in there every single day. So I think with to sort of wrap it all back to NewsBud, uh, there's so many opportunities to really get into this case. There's so many different angles. And again, not necessarily that I would have to do all of it. But I think with NewsBud, we'd have the opportunity, we'd have the resources to, hey, let's find a, a good local sort of, you know, beat reporter in Palm Beach who's going to go around knocking on doors, interviewing some of these victims. Maybe there are things that they didn't say originally that now they want to talk about. Maybe there are uh, more girls that weren't even involved in the very beginning of this. So there's a lot of different angles that I think NewsBud could really help in, uh, you know, driving down. All right. Well, if you want to see that type of reporting, as I do, I hope you will contribute to the Kickstarter campaign. Again, the details are at newsbud.com, and you can find a link directly to the Kickstarter so that you can go and make your pledge. Again, it's an all-or-nothing funding campaign, so if the funding goal is not reached by the cutoff of April 14th, then nothing goes through, you don't pay a penny, and everything stops. But if it does go through, we get to see independent and uh, valuable media uh, on subjects like this. Pierce Redmond, Porkins Policy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, James.